And joining us now is consultant pediatrician Dr. Ifeinwa Amamilo to have a conversation. Good morning, Dr. Ifeinwa. Good morning, Amaka. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for asking. Uh, now, the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 has disclosed that three out of the numerous claims of COVID-19 uh, local cure have been validated and forwarded for further investigation. How hopeful are you, uh, Nigeria, might come up with a local remedy? Oh, very hopeful. Actually, Nigerians are very hardworking, talented, and indigenous people. And therefore, it's actually not perfect for us to develop local remedies. However, these remedies will have to undergo very, very strict trials, so as to, which, of course, of international standards, so as to be able to bring out strong evidence about its benefits and its risk factors. And then, so that at the point of approval, it will, it will gain international approval. I mean, that's, um, that's what the government may have to focus on. Thank you. All right, Dr. Ifeinwa, we understand contact tracing is still on. Considering that we are now at the community transmission stage, shouldn't we give that up and focus on, you know, uh, what, the, what are the present symptoms? Okay, you mean give that up and focus on those who present with symptoms? Yes, I, 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 rather. Actually, actually, contact tracing is, um, is something, is a concept that has been on even for some infectious diseases that have been with us things like tuberculosis and some of the sexually transmitted diseases. Contact tracing actually focuses on limiting community spread. So I think that treating may stop, but while contact treating is on, we may have to take another approach as to the management of those with symptoms. For instance, those with asymptomatic and mild uh, symptoms may have to stay home and stay on isolation at home and then contact ND, 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 NCDC and their phone for, and then get people to check them up at home while those with severe symptoms may have to now be admitted because admitting everybody who is positive may actually not be cost effective and already we may and, and already and, and again the government may have to also focus on having to strengthen the public health uh, the public hospitals and the health sector in general with training our personnel to adapt to providing normal health care services in the face of COVID-19. I think that's where the government will have to strengthen. All right, if I may just follow up on what you just said. Um, if admitting everyone who is positive is not cost effective, as you have said it, on the flip side, if they are left at home, the, the, the truth is that they'll continue to infect others. What is the lesser evil? Is it keeping them at home or finding a way of making sure everybody is admitted? Because if they go on infecting others, we get more cases and that's not the solution, if you like. Yeah, I think keeping them at home and keeping them at home with very strict conditions. For instance, if someone is at home and that person is in a particular room and everybody who is at, who are at home with that person does not have contact with the person until the person goes through the phase of, of um, the, the, cause of the, the, the virus and then comes out tested and comes in, I think it will work because everybody who's home knows that this person is already infected and needs to be isolated from the rest. But if the person, but if we have to take everybody who is positive, both the mild and those with very severe symptoms into, into isolation centers, it's clear to us that there has been a lot of issues with with having to manage a lot of people in the isolation centers, issues with food, issues with the personnel, and a lot of things. So that actually may not be cost effective. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Now, the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 yesterday alluded to the possibility of reopening schools. You know, there were talks about uh, sectionalizing classes for primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions in the country, in spite of coronavirus pandemic not abating. What's your thought on this? Okay, obviously, eventually, WHO has already told us two weeks ago that we may have to live with the fact that COVID-19 is now endemic. So the truth is, obviously, at the point when we start to think about reopening schools, there are things that also need to be fixed. Because I understand that the, 
the, the, the, ministry, the Ministry of Education is trying to sectionalize reopening of schools. So, for instance, some people have to go to school in the morning and some other people have to go to school in the afternoon. But there, there, there are issues because sometimes you, know, you have to double the hours of the teachers who are underpaid and already, on, and already overworked. And at the same time, monitoring and regulation of these kind of measures are actually very, very um, challenging. So the truth is, the government may need to actually improve on these ideas because actually the other ideas we have to think about having to leave COVID and think about reopening schools. But we need to actually put in a lot of effort on funding and implementation of these ideas and not just say, oh, is what we need to do. So if these ideas are properly planned, I'm sure it will give a good impact and it's an idea worth exploring. Mm -hmm. I apologize for the quality of your line there. We have a bit of technical issues, but let's move on. Uh, would you consider some of the decision from considering reopen, uh, reopening of schools rather to further relaxing lo lockdown measures as part of the finding uh, the homegrown, homegrown approach to managing uh, this pandemic? Oh, yes. So, uh, like I said, the, the World Health Organization two weeks ago told us that we may have to start living with COVID-19 as an endemic um, endemic illness. So, the truth is, um, I'm sure at, at every country is beginning to think about ways an indigenous approach to, to live with this illness. So, for Nigeria, I think the government may need to look at the, our pre-COVID realities and challenges, things like the, the mood of the population, the quality of the healthcare sector, the quality of life in Nigeria, the standard of living, and these will influence a holistic approach to how we're going to to you know, ease off the lockdown, reopen schools, and also and also. Um, um, live with this COVID because for instance during the lockdown Nigerians were more about how hungry they were than the COVID and also a lot of even with the palliative measures people were crying out that it wasn't getting to them and all of that so actually the system will have to come to a place where putting all these factors in place we need to bring out homegrown ideas as to how we're going to ease off these um, ease of the lockdown measures and then we get back to our lives as usual. I know Nigerians have the intellectuals to develop them and so the government may need to engage people to produce ideas and then of ideas also. Mm -hmm. That's very reassuring. That's very reassuring. Uh, lastly, before I let you go, uh, what's your take on the position uh, of NAVDAC to continue uh, using chloroquine for clinical trials against the, you know, the warning from the WHO? Okay, actually, you know that WHO only suspended the use of hydroxyurea in a, in a current trial, that's the solidarity trial that <clears throat> was aimed at getting very quick results on the clinical trial of that result. And this is actually, these are studies that will usually take a long, a long longer years to get something very useful. Again, this, this attention was on the, on the basis of the profiles. And also, French government five days ago gave, did a ban on the use of um, on the use of hydroxyurea in the treatment of COVID-19. FDA, the, the FDA, the US also have many issues with with the use of COVID-19 against you know the stance of the American president. But you know that the the, the US political client has a lot of things, but, you know, very uncertain about what exactly is coming is happening there. But coming home, I think every country um, has the ability to do things to so that we can learn from it. So actually, I, I think that the NAVDA should go on with our trials. Because no, no country has done the answers and, and, and made it on these trials until we ourselves get very strong evidence against the use of hydroxychloroquine. All right, and Dr. Can, Ife, all right. More so when our, our case management teams have agreed to the benefits of this of, of the use of this drug. So I think the government may need to um, come up with 
um, a lot of support for trials of you know trials health related trials and research so as we can you know get indigenous solutions for healthcare problems thank you so very much dr ifeinwa for your time with us and keep safe out there thank you so much amaka Thank you.